let me show you some tips and tricks for Samsung Galaxy Tab A11. And we're gonna start with the app drawer. So if you go to the app drawer, you will notice that there is no really any sorting uh, in the, on this list. So if you prefer to have, for example, alphabetical sorting on the app drawer, then you can tap on these three dots that we have on the search bar over here at the bottom. Now we can choose sort and we can switch from custom order to alphabetical order. And now as you can see, the list is actually sorted by, uh, by the alphabet, by, by names. And this also includes folders. So if you have folders in the app drawer, then of course we can sort them like this as well. If you prefer to go back to the old style, then of course we can switch back to the custom order. Keep in mind that with the custom order, you can actually have uh, different pages in the app drawer. And if you use the alphabetical order, then in that case, you can only scroll up and down. So we have just say one single list, there are no pages. So this is something that we need to remember about, depending on if you prefer to have it, uh, if you prefer to have the custom order with uh, pages, or if you prefer a single list that is alphabetical. Now, another thing that I want to show you is in the settings. Over here, we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna choose wallpaper and style. And then it goes to change wallpapers in order to then find the dynamic lock screen option at the bottom over here. This option allows you to use uh, several different categories, up to five categories, and then based on these categories, you will change the wallpaper on your lock screen every time you open the lock screen. So let's say I'm gonna choose docs, life, and landscapes. There we go. And now with these options enabled, if I open the lock screen, then you will notice that I have a different wallpaper reopen and we have another wallpaper and so on and so forth. If you prefer to actually have just one single wallpaper, then you can still, of course, turn it off. You just have to uncheck every category that we have over here. Another thing that is quite cool is the daily board, which uh, can actually be enabled and disabled in the settings. So in order to find it, we're gonna scroll down over here on the left side and go to advanced features. And then here we have the daily board which can be enabled and disabled. You can also customize it a little bit, but first let me actually show you how to get it, how to show, how to enable the daily board. So what you need to do is you need to start charging your tablet. And then in the bottom left corner, we have this daily board icon. We can tap on it in order to switch the view to something like this. So we have the clock, for example, we can swipe to this uh, drawing section. You can actually draw over here if you use the pen icon that we have over here in the upper right corner. By the way, over here we have a bunch of different tools that we can use. We also have smart things and uh, like a screensaver or something. So definitely worth checking out, especially uh, if you just want to leave your tablet uh, running, but you want to have this uh, huge clock, for example. Another thing that I want to show you is edge lights or edge lighting effects. In order to find them, we need to go back to settings. Now over here, we're gonna go to let me actually try to find it, there we go, notifications, and then go to notification pop-up style. Make sure that the brief option is selected and then we have edge lighting style. Now in here, my favorite one is the echo one, uh, which allows us to have these uh, lines on sides whenever we receive a new notification. You can of course choose anything else if you prefer to. You can also change the color and we also have some advanced settings as well, like the adjustment of transparency and the duration. So definitely worth uh, using this feature. This also is being displayed when the screen is off so that when you receive a notification, you will not you will not only have the sound, but also you will have this visual cue. Another thing that I want to show you is actually again in the wallpaper and style. Over here we have color palette option, which allows you to make some uh, changes to colors in different menus and apps. For example, if we turn on color palette, and if I go to quick settings, you will notice that it has like a slight uh, color, which we can also adjust, of course, by choosing any other colors from this list over here, either by choosing one of these uh, wallpaper colors or by choosing one of these basic colors if we switch to basic over there. But first, let's actually let the app uh, turn it on. There we go. So now after applying this uh, color palette, you can notice that switchers have a different color. There is also a little bit of a color on the text over here in settings. There we go. Quick settings also have uh, like uh, these uh, yellowish color as well. So definitely pretty cool stuff. However, that's not all because over here we can also apply the color palette to 
app icons. Unfortunately, it is not working for every app, but as you can see over here now in the home screen, every app has uh, pretty much the same color. But if you open the app drawer, you will definitely notice some apps that unfortunately are not really working with this feature, as I mentioned. There are some exceptions, like some third-party apps are actually um, do apply this uh, feature, this, uh, this color palette, but many of them are actually not. So uh, we can, for example, stick with uh, these uh, uh, colored icons in the home screen, but of course in the app drawer we can just separate it, or you can just move these apps uh, to, a, to another page if you want to separate them. So you may already know that if you swipe down in the middle or the left side of the screen, then you can open notifications. And if you swipe on the right side, you can open quick settings. However, we can actually combine these two together, at least in some way. So if you tap on this pen icon and go to panel settings, we can switch from separate to together. And also in addition to that, what I can recommend you to do is use this uh, device control and media output buttons option and choose to show when the quick panel is collapsed. So now after that, if you open notifications, you will see that we have these additional tools, part of um, the icons or buttons that we have in quick settings, these uh, slider for screen brightness, and also these device control and media output buttons. But if we swipe down again, then of course we have our uh, quick settings. So if you prefer this style, then of course you can easily change that. As you can see now, if I swipe on the right side or the left side, it looks always the same and we can access quick settings from every uh, side of the screen, not only from the right side. On Samsung devices, we have a secure folder, which I have already set up. I have it over here. And secure folder is a really great tool that allows you to create a separate environment within your tablet, uh, which allows you therefore to store apps and photos and videos and data in general. Uh, separated from everything else that you have outside of it. So this means that a secure folder, which I'm going to open right now, can be used to, let's say, duplicate files, to uh, lock apps as well, because uh, the secure folder, of course, has its own password. So whatever you add into the secure folder, in order to open that, you need to have the password, you need to know the password, and you need to enter it. And uh, in addition to that, besides uh, cloning and... Um, and locking apps, you can also treat it as a way to hide apps in some way, because whatever you have inside the secure folder, you don't have to have outside of the secure folder. Of course, you can, but you don't have to. So if I tap on this plus button, first I can see the list of apps that I already have on my tablet, but I can download new apps from the Play Store. Of course, I need to sign in, and the reason why you need to sign in is because the uh, secure folder doesn't have your Google account until you actually sign in. Even if you are already signed into your account, over here you will have to do that again. So you can go to the Play Store or Galaxy Store and you can download apps that you don't have installed yet. So this is why we can use it as a way to lock apps or hide apps or even duplicate apps because of course we can uh, once again choose the same app that we already have. And if you want to set up the secure folder, we need to open settings of course, go to security and privacy, and then over here we can go to more security settings and finally in here we have the secure folder. Now in my case of course I just have settings. Uh, in your case you will have to uh, grant permissions, wait a couple of uh, seconds to let the tablet set it up and then you can choose the password and so on. And um, of course we also have the option to let's say hide the uh, secure folder or remove it actually from the app screen and uh, yeah so definitely worth checking out if you want to um, you know hide photos and videos as well because uh, the gallery um, can be actually accessed in a secure folder as well over here i believe i actually do have some photos that i moved to this secure folder as you can see over here i just have four photos but if i open this gallery i have much more so we can use it to uh, hide stuff lock stuff and to duplicate stuff as well you can actually connect your tablet with your a monitor or TV as long as you have a screen mirroring option available on that other device. TVs usually have that option. So as long as your TV, for example, supports Android devices and tablets, of course, including. And also, if you use the same Wi-Fi, then you should be able to cast the screen on uh, of your tablet on your TV. In that case, you want to go to connected devices in settings and you should be able to find the smart view option over here. 
and if you meet the criteria that I mentioned, so if there is the support of Android and also the same Wi-Fi, and the TV is of course powered on, then you should be able to select the TV, connect your tablet with the TV, and uh, share the screen. Besides that, let's actually go back to settings. If you feel like your tablet is slightly too slow, if you wish to speed it up a little bit, then in that case you can uh, go to, let me actually try to find it, there we go, device care. Then over here we're going to choose memory. And after a couple of seconds we should be able to scroll down to find a RAM plus option, which allows you to extend the memory up to 8GB. Of course you will have to restart the tablet in order to apply these changes, but this will definitely help you at least a little bit uh, with, the, um, with the tablet if it's uh, underperforming in some way. Last but not least, we can also scroll up over here and go to modes and routines. Of course, over here you can find some modes like sleep and uh, driving and game and so on and so forth. However, what I want to actually show you are routines. Because you can create automatic and manual as well. Uh, routines and that can be activated whenever something happens something of your choice of course so if you press this plus button over here in the top right corner you can uh, uh, choose triggers so what should happen in order to make the routine uh, activated to make it work and we have a bunch of different options that you can go through like it can be a change of wi-fi it can be when you connect a bluetooth device it can be when you connect uh, headphones wired headphones of course it can be when you open a specific app or apps actually, when you receive a call and so on and so forth. Lots of options you can see, as you can see over here. So you have conditions and of course the um, what should happen when uh, these uh, triggers are of course uh, occurring on a tablet. So for example, if uh, you know, if uh, let's say I connect to a specific Wi-Fi, I can uh, let's say uh, change something in display settings. Like I can uh, enable the dark mode, for example. I can change the font style. If uh, let's say time switches to maybe not switches, but if it's like 9 p.m., if the clock hits 9 p.m., then I can, uh, for example, change uh, the wallpaper. I can adjust some settings here and there. Lots of options to, of course, go through. We also have some effects over here, like beep ones, vibrate ones, so we can pretty much create almost every anything that you wish your tablet to do if these conditions of your choice are met. And if you have no idea what you want to create over here, if you want to have some automations, but you don't know what to actually do, you can also use this cover over here, um, because you can find some examples that can be quite useful as well. And that is pretty much it. Definitely there are more stuff to discover uh, if you have Galaxy Tab A11. And if there is something that you think I should have mentioned in this video that is quite useful to know about, uh, then uh, let us know in the comments. Of course, everyone can enjoy the tablet as much as possible. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe.